Uh, the Jerry Anderson shows are obviously ripe for adaptation by Hollywood, aren't they, Richard James? I mean, a oh, big yes. budget feature film of Space 1999 or oh, UFO. It's got to happen. It's got mm, to happen. Yeah, well, they've uh, they've been discussed at length. Yes, uh, they have. That's uh, true. Uh, over many, many years. Uh, yeah. And there was even the ill-fated, although loved by some, live-action Thunderbirds movie in 2004. Yeah, true. Yeah, but, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yes. In what way was it ill-fated? I mean, well, it did all right, didn't it? Not it really, is. no. I don't, did it not? I don't think it made its budget back, did it? Oh, uh, OK, OK. So that is ill-fated. Go cool. so, But, you know, it got lots of you, even some of you listening right now, you podstrons, into the world yeah. of Jerry Anderson, so we can't be totally ungrateful and against no. it. But exactly. just mostly. Anyway, we've oh. talked a lot about the various attempts to bring these shows to the cinema, but one we don't mention very often, and for good reason, is Joe 90. Oh? Yes, even that little uh, <clears throat> Joe Puppet. was yeah. <laughs> uh, believed to have big screen potential. Really? Believe it or not, yes. In 2003, yeah. a pair of producers purchased the rights to make a Joe 90 movie. Uh, oh. The company Angry Films... Mm, understandably yeah, I'd be angry if I bought yeah. the uh, Joe 90 rights <laughs> uh, was allegedly hiring screenwriters to make the movie to be released by Disney and they were so confident of the success of this that they contacted film industry trade paper Variety to let them know that the project was underway oh. now unfortunately as so often happens it seems the project never went any further and it seems right. that there was yeah. a Spy Kids craze at the time due to the success of that particular film series. Oh. But the trend was rapidly and probably justifiably coming to an end. Mm -hmm. uh, that, combined with the lacklustre box office performance of the 2004 Thunderbirds film, may have influenced Angry Films to put Joe 90 back on the shelf. Oh, now, but what, what, a shame. what do you think a Joe 90 movie would have been like? Would you have gone to the cinema to support it? More importantly... Wouldn't you rather see a big budget version of the Secret Service? Yes. Do yes, I would. Send your comments to podcast at jerryanderson <laughs> uh, and yeah. SPA, please. It, exactly. Send Podstron amusement. Yes, that's yes, right. This, I'm no, not sure this is going to catch oh. on, but we can try. No, uh, okay, well, come on, just keep plugging away. Don't give up that easily. Okay, fine. Well, look, if it, if it had been made in that Spy Kids era, I just have a feeling it would have been terrible. I mean, I probably a Joe that would be even more precocious than the 1968 no, version. No, I, uh, but I think, now, you see, I, I was in, I wasn't in Spy Kids, but at about the same time, I had a very, very small role in a film called Stormbreaker, yes. which uh, was based on the Alex Ryder novels by Anthony Horowitz. Yes. And uh, they've now made a series of that, I think. They have so two, it was, in fact. Yeah, right. Uh, very of its time. Uh, and I suspect if, if they had made a... I'm suspecting it would be a live-action Joe 90. It was, um, yeah. And I would say he'd be a teenager. Mm. I think that would be the way it would go, wouldn't it? You know, sort of 14, 15, 16-year-old. Yeah. And would they have taken the opportunity to, to iron out the kinks, you know, the stuff that you don't like, uh, about the, you know, the whole the ethics of, of, uh, of um, being put through Oh, I think machine. the ethics side is, is fascinating. Yeah. But it's just not... That, I mean, it's not very it's Disney, though, it's, is it? it's not, no, and it's not touched upon at all in the in the show. I mean, I think yeah. it's very easy for all these things to say. Oh, do you know what? I would really love a dark, a darker, grittier version of dot dot dot. Yeah, it's yeah. an easy shortcut, isn't it? But in this case, <laughs> yes, if I had to watch Joe ninety, I would want to see a darker, grittier version of Joe ninety. To be honest, okay. and it's probably something more akin to Alex Ryder, with yeah. uh, with the kind of uh, the, the technical side of Joss Sweden's um, Dollhouse. Oh, okay. Which was about you know the uh, implanting of memories and skills into into secret agents, yeah. I believe. So yeah. if you combine those two, I can see there being some some serious potential. And I mean, you, you talk about a, a big budget version of Secret Service. Yes, I mean, oh, and I just like to point out in Stormbreaker, I played a vicar. Did you? Uh, you know, I've got form. If you're, you know, if that if that happens and they need a new, you know, Father Unwin. Well, I did. I did I write a treatment for a. A new Secret Service a few years ago. Yeah, it was really fun, and I was really pleased with it. But yes. I've never, I've never tried to do anything with it. But um, oh, who knows? Well, Maybe one day. Who knows? Yes, lovely. <laughs> you don't sound very convinced, but uh, who knows? <laughs> well, well, what would you do, Podstrons? If you could go for a, a, a live-action Jerry Anderson reboot, which which one would it be, and why? Mm -hmm. um, I don't and say Captain Scarlet. Well, everyone says Captain Scarlet because it's an yeah, easy one. Exactly. But maybe yeah. you know, actually, you think, oh, Terror Hawks. Well. Mm. Good idea. Yes. Okay. Or, or maybe yeah. you're thinking supercar. I don't know. Candy and Andy. Yeah. Kitten. No. Yeah. Maybe not that. Okay. One. Okay. Mm. 
supercar yeah. yes i could see that yeah well dirk mags would certainly love to see uh, a live action supercar i know but uh, anyway yeah. do let us know spa uh, as much as you possibly can <laughs> uh, and email us podcast at jerryanderson.com 